This is the Mikes and Beers Podcast. Yeah, we did it for the gold medal champions! JK, guys, it's just us. Croft Woody, Smith, RQ Luxton, back for another great episode of Mikes and Beers. The beers are on ice, and the mics are hot. Sam, welcome back to, I believe, episode 28. Who cares about keeping track? All that matters is how you doing. You irk me. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. It's uh, we we're doing this on a weekday though, which is kind of weird. Uh, usually we don't do this on weekdays. Usually I am in bed at this point, even though there's still light out because I am old and I like to sleep. So I don't want to give into that. It's, I get it's Monday, but you that doesn't mean you'd be cranky to me. I'm old too. I want to be in bed. I want to be getting ready. I want to be in my PJs, snuggling up to my shows, watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer because that shit's just apparently on my TV now. But no, Sam, we're going to do this. Is that cool? You, you're probably, you definitely wear like footsie pajamas, don't you? I would friggin' love that. Especially when the weather gets cold. I'm not ashamed. I want to be comfortable. That's just how it is, Sam. I, I know what I'm getting you for your next birthday. Probably one of these great beers we're about to try. So let's get right into there, it. There we go. Great segue. Good job. Segue city. I love it. So Sam, as ten. always, you have your magic bag of tricks filled with beer we don't know about. And I have hand selected mine this time as usual because it's going to affect yeah, the topic never, later on. you never do this i like to i like to keep it like it's a surprise also not sponsored yeah, but mine's I, all I from still, the same company i still like this cooler though hey 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 hibsy you remember yes sam we get it you stole it you're a terrible human being <laughs> no he left it with me and he wanted it back and then i'm just like well didn't come and get it and then he can never find it when he came over so uh, anyway reaching into the bag of tricks oh what are you grabbing hey <laughs> we're actually in the same room i think it's like a tic tac oh uh, it's smaller than that <laughs> <laughs> Whoop. i do what is it like this one this is all or nothing brew house from oshawa ontario we have done a an entire podcast about this this yes, brewery well deserved um this one was uh it's a limited release it's the slow and steady pastry stout 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 so um Spirit and it's glazed season. i don't i'm i'm already drunk guys um <laughs> it's, it's the glazed cinnamon roll and uh yeah this beer i've had this one before it really does taste like a glazed cinnamon roll and uh, yeah, to be honest, like, I feel like I always pull out these beers that like don't taste like traditional beers. So it's just whether or not you want to give it a try. Uh, if you are more of a traditional, like you want a traditional tasting beer, then have a traditional tasting beer. I'm not about to kill you. Yes, I know, Woody. I'm like this one. guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I like to try something a little different every now and then. Um, You're all about experimentation. You do I, you. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> and this beer clocks in at 5%. So it's very just average, you know, just it doesn't, it's not up, it's not down, it's just right. Sure, up, down, all around. It goes all of, goes through the same way. Mm-hmm. Now, Sam, you see, what do you have? I, I didn't just hand slack my beer. I went on a tour, if you will, an That's expedition. The shit. What do you have? I went to find the city of Lost Gold and oh, uh, I came up with. A beautiful, spectacular beer from Chronicle Brewery, our hometown heroes, El Dorado IPA. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had it earlier, sipping, uh, sipping on one of these poolside, and I was excited to be able to talk about this because, I mean, first of all, the movie that I'm going to say is loosely based on, even though it's not, so no copyright infringement is being done. Mm-hmm. But if fucking it's awesome. And it relates back to what we're going to talk about. But as always, Sam, when we all talk about our beers, we have to do one important thing with them. That's open them. Let's get to it. Absolutely. Oh, 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 oh. It's like a stupid tradition. You know what I love? I love it when I get friggin' beer in my keyboard. Oh, that's I, cool. I also hey, got you? beer on my carpet everywhere. Why don't you guys just open it away? Well, you think I would fucking learn, but I don't. And that's just why I'm so No, I just opened it over my floor. It's liquid friggin' gold. Look at that. Be- beautiful. Like it's a little, on my computer, it looks a lot lighter than it is, but it's just got this nice gold tinge, nice haze. Oh, it's what an IPA should be. Clocking in at 6%. Why Sam takes her time with it, I'm going to be the first one to try it. 
I got beer on my floor and it's on my legs and I taste like beer now. So I got beer. That'd be delicious. Sam. that's the first time I'd lick you. <laughs> cool. I should just, I should, cool. Call, I should just call Justin in right now. Justin, I have a, uh, spill. What do you just, uh, yes. Spill <laughs> what he's hitting on me. I spilled on Justin. I'll lick it from him too. I'm sure it's okay, but that's why I love this. Oh, this is a nice, beautiful haze to it. This, like I said, this is how an IPA should taste guys. If you're an IPA fan, can't stress it enough. El Dorado from Cronkle Brewery. Jesus Lord. Might be worth its weight in gold for sure. And this stout is so Stop. good. <laughs> Fuck you, Woody. Seriously. Um, no, but I actually, you know what? I feel like anyone who drinks a stout anyway is really into some it's like beers that taste like, you know, coffee or or chocolate or something like that. This, I mean, it's not. I'm sorry. That's a gagging voice and look because. Fuck it, I don't get it. Cho- chocolate okay, beer. Special and- thanks. Oh. We're just <laughs> we're ending it. I'm Monday it already. We're- yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I should. I just should just it. learn to shut up once in a while. Anyway, it's a good beer. Let's continue. What were you going to talk about, Woody? We're not even going to do a segue. Well, no. My first question actually is with your beer. So when I think of cinna- like cinnamon rolls, is it literally like cin- like just cinnabon in a glass? Let's just be real. Um, a little bit. Yeah. It's, I mean, it has, it, it tastes, it's beer, but it has like that kind of hint of cinnamon roll. I know. Right. It tastes, it tastes like beer guys. I am definitely an, an expert beer drinker. And I'm going to tell you guys <laughs> beer tastes like beer. Wow. Uh, I didn't mean to be, I'm so sarcastic on a Monday. <laughs> Fuck off. I must be a riot at work. Yeah. I think, I think this like this past week and I should just be like, oh, good job. God. Like yeah. condescending ass tone and thing, <laughs> but Sam, it's um, she still it, loves me. I know I, it comes as a surprise, but what co- doesn't come as a surprise? And as I'm talking about gold, I, I look at you and that luscious bronze-like hair. Um, together we are silver s couple pairing. Um, it's almost like we are blessed upon five rings of power that come together, I guess, to make sure we figure out who the best of the best is. And this is the worst segue I could ever think of to talking about, hey, something that's kind of now should be past us because I'm already frigging over it. I was over it since day one. Sam, it's the Olympics. Mm-hmm. Happens every four years. It's right now the Summer Olympics, the worst one of the Olympics to most northern countries like us in Canada. Because there's no hockey in it. That's There's no ice. There's just no, no fucking ice, ice sports. <laughs> nope. They're like, well, what does that matter? Have you seen us most of the time in the year? You go further up north, it's just fucking snow and ice. I know we joke about Canada as a stereotype, but there's a good chunk of our country that's just snow and ice. So we don't give a rat's ass about fucking Summer Olympics. Here we are, Sam. Here we are. Uh, are going to say something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Summer Olympics. Yay. Um, I think it's hilarious. It's hilarious because... It is the 2020 Summer Olympics, and it is in 2021. I got so confused by your statement. I was like, no, it's 2021, Sam. But yeah, no, I know it's 2021. Right. I know what year it is, but it's the 2020 <laughs> Olympics. Yep. And it's which is weird. still as awful Why as you can call imagine. it the 2021 Olympics. I know that they've always done the four year thing. And so it's like, yeah, this kind of tells a story. It's like, oh, yeah, this was the year that we couldn't do the Olympics because of the absolute shit show that this pandemic has been. So yeah. just do it 2021. And then, and then uh, I don't know, do like the three year stint or something like that. And then kind of get back on track if you really want to, or cancel it. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking yeah. cancel it. It's the summer Olympics. I know this yeah. means something to people. I joke. You there are some things I will watch kill us for saying that. What? You know how many athletes would kill us for saying that? Like, do oh, just cancel it. Just can't, and, and well, especially now, sure, absolutely. But that's a whole political statement. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to the Olympics, like I said, I don't care about some of the things that go on there. Mm-hmm. Do you want to want to talk about some fascinating shit? I've actually got some of the list of sports here, and they're pretty stupid. Uh, let me check. Oh, look, I have bicycling. Who can ride a bike faster? Okay, sure. Swimming. Okay, I get that. Um, diving, sure. Baseball, okay. Running, sure. Um, ri- rhythmic dancing. Oh yeah, no, that's 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 a sport. You'd excel. Um, I think you'd excel at that one. That's the one you acro- for. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, what do we got? Three, three on three basketball. Yeah, that's, that's real. Artistic swimming. 
Yep. Can't wait. Is that not safe for swimming then? Mm-hmm. It's still dumb. Equestrian. Yeah, that's what I like to do in the morning. I want to get up and watch people ride a horse and watch it jump. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, I do appreciate ki- kayaking, canoeing. I, I, I like that. Canada's actually pretty damn good at that for somehow. To be honest, my sister used to do equestrian. She used to do the show jumping and stuff. It was actually quite interesting. Just FYI. Sure. For my, shooting. My opinion. Pardon? Shooting? Shooting's fun. Rugby's fun. Skateboarding's uh, kind of stupid. And I can go on and on. And I, I just look at some of the, like, water polo. Give me a break. <sighs> Weightlifting, okay. Because I'm one of those old school fingers. I look back at to what Greece did. And it was, like, the best of the best across the world, obviously, for, like, you real athletic sports. Uh, yeah, to an extent. And, I mean, I'm not going to knock the athletes in these. Just because I call the sport and what the activity they're doing is dumb. I could never do it in a million years. And there's a reason why they're at the top of the world. Because they mm-hmm. perfected and honed their skills to the point they can do these challenges. Um, I just don't think they're entertaining whatsoever, except a few. Like I said, I'll, I'll watch rugby to I'm blue in the face. I will watch some of the basketball. I will watch some of the karate, judo, weightlifting. Uh, I, wait, what? do they still have ping pong? Uh, yep, they That's still have li- table tennis. And that Seriously? can be a fucking intense sport. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, that is really intense, but it's also like hilarious. Because I'm just like, how is this a sport? And you know what, Sam? That is the kicker. It is literally one of the stupidest. Sorry, I'm just scrolling through my notes just so I can uh, get to the next point because we're unscripted and I don't give a shit. I think table tennis is highly stupid Um, because like just on paper, I'm going to say on paper because realistically, ping pong, uh, an Olympic sport, ribbon thing. It is, but then I watch table tennis. Gymnastics, right? Sure. I don't care. I I don't even want to take my time to research it because I've watched it enough. I'm just like, I don't give a shit. But well, watch those guys smoke a ping pong ball. So, yeah. But a ping pong ball going a million miles an hour and you got to fucking keep your eyes on it. That's okay. Sure. That is intense. That is cool. It's not an Olympic sport, but that's near say because I mean, fuck, they want video games in there. So, what do I know? But I did do some research. I did do some fun things. What the Olympics used to hold. And Sam, I want you to tell me if we should bring them back. Okay. So, Once upon a time ago, it was discontinued in 1920. Tug of war was an Olympic sport. Fuck yes, I love tug of war. But the thing is, though, is that that's not really, I mean, that's kind of, it's kind of like the whole weightlifting, too. I mean, like, you just want strong people, right? But, like, anyone can do tug of war. Like, I could could do tug of war. It's just whether or not I'll win or not. And And it depends on the people that I'm, you know, tugging, tugging on. Ooh, hey. Sam, give a little tug before just to get the team ready to go. Yep. Let's see. But I, to me, I think with that sport, it's, a little, it's going to be a little bit more than just pure strength. Like, if you got, like, let's say it's a team of five all pulling, you're not going to beat a team maybe and have that technique to go over against teams that are pulling out one because you're, you're trying to match five guys' strength and five women's strength equal and trying to pull so much until. It, it's to me, it's a power and an endurance test that I actually would like to see because it's just the novelty that is friggin' tug of war. Mm-hmm. People might say, well, then how do you say yes to that? Some other sports that I've made fun of. It's first of all, personal opinion. So <laughs> who cares? My own damn opinion. I'll have it. But I, yeah, I'm up for tug of war coming back. Um, next one on the list is kind of fucked up. It was added in the, literally the year 1900 and lasted for one Olympic. <laughs> Live pigeon shooting yeah so as the description says as a funny note shooting at a stationary target is too easy so live pigeon shooting was added in the 1900 the event only lasted one year and an estimated 300 birds were killed yeah that's wow. excessive i mean i can understand shooting with like you know like the poles where they like you know th- those types the i don't even know what it is like but like they say pole and then i don't even know i don't even know if they say pole but that's it's just something's launched in the sky it's a disc and then they have to shoot the disc oh uh, skeet shooting that thing yeah yeah they it's usually yeah, like a clay pot or clay target of some sort and you have a, a right they say, no, they say pole right they say oh no pole, pole. oh my fucking god i but they say that. pole to launch the target Oh, you're talking about sh- like shooting a pole. I'm like, no, they wouldn't use a pole on a pigeon, Sam. You can't I harpoon those. Thought that they said pole, not pole. 
I believe, yeah, I, I think it is pull, and then they pull the. the yeah, it makes to sense. Yeah, target. just to tell them like to to pull it for the target. Yeah, but yeah, because it happened in 1900, I'm sure we don't have any live footage, but I bet you it is skeet shooting. That, that with oh line. yeah, but so did they change it to skeet shooting? Like, is that an actual Olympic thing, or did you do that much research? Uh, so I, all it says, so it's not that they came up with these ideas by the like with what it's saying me and then they replaced it with the next year like keep in mind i don't think skeet shooting i didn't check when certain events all came in Mm -hmm. i would assume skeet shooting would have came later on instead of 1900 literally the year one zero or one nine zero zero um before the first world war so I, i imagine skeet shooting might not have been in there but i don't know but I, I fully agree. Uh, New Yorkers might fucking want this sport back and donate all their stupid little pigeons there, but I, I can uh, yeah, see they a, lot a lot of problems that. Now, next, one of my favorite that I kind of want to see bring back, because it has got to be one of the dumber ones, solo synchronized swimming. It was apparently... Um, How? It, it survived only three Olympics. It started off in 1984 and ended in 1992, but they had a solo synchronized swimming how is, is it synchronized if it's solo easy sam you synchronize your left leg with your right leg and do a stupid dance by yourself that's just art wait you just said that there's like artistic swimming or or rhythmic swimming or something like that before is that it, not so the it, same thing no so i feel like that would be the same thing yes. though I'm trying to find the exact title of what I said. So artistic swimming. Yeah. It's going to follow the the lines of um, synchronized swimming and all that kind of stuff, but it's one person, one goddamn person who will dance like an idiot. And it's at that point, I'm just like, there's not much judge that. So the same judging would still apply. I would would imagine with synchronized swimming, except you're not, it would take out the scoring of matching up and how well synchronized you are with your teammates. They're probably going to judge like most of their dancing competitions, your style, um, how artistic, whatever. I don't, I'm taking a wild guess, but I'm, I know, I would assume. Seriously, I don't understand how that would even be a thing. And that's probably why it only survived three Olympics. Yeah, no, it's just, it's as stupid as it sounds. <laughs> it's, it sounds pretty, pretty fucking stupid. So this one was kind of fun. I'm just going to read it. It's called Steeplechase. It doesn't give the years that it was introduced. I know in. what a steeplechase is. Is it with the horses? Yes, yeah, so a steeplechase previously involved riding horses over obstacles between two towns, but that has changed throughout the years. Now people just run a basic obstacle course, which, as we know, is equestrian jumping. Um, but that shit's intense that you would have it basically. So in this case, it's Tokyo. Between two smaller towns around Tokyo, you would just have fucking horses taken off and steeplechase. I would assume it's jumping as well as time. Well, a steeplechase, because um, I've actually seen a steeplechase before because it's actually based okay. in Ireland. Um, it is kind of like a cross between equestrian jumping and like the Kentucky Derby. So you are, um, you're going around a track and there, there is jumping as well. So it's like, not only, yeah, not only are you trying to be the fastest, but you're also trying to like, it's like, it's like hurdling with horses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I mean, that is cool because I would almost want to, I wouldn't want it as Olympic sport, but I would want to watch it. In the sense, just say I've watched it once to see what it's about. I'd probably say, no, at that point, it's not Olympic sport because it really doesn't matter in the country. It really goes about the the horse itself. People can be like, no, you need the special rider. Yeah, you need a good rider for sure. Jockey, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. But that comes down to the horse. That's literally, I say it has no business. And people can say it's the same as equestrian jumping then. I'm like, yes, to an extent, and that's why I don't really care for equestrian jumping. I like horse events. I used to do horse racing back in the day with my family. That's something that we enjoyed. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's something I, I would like it as an event, uh, maybe a world event, like a championship, but mm-hmm. not for the Olympics. I find actually, so so horse jumping is actually a lot different than horse racing. Because that's where it's just kind of sure. like, you need you need a horse that's really fast and you just need a jockey to stay on and make sure that like the horse lines up, they don't foul anyone. Um, And then you, you actually do have to like maneuver it and stuff. But with, um, with jumping, you actually do need to have a a rider that knows the horse's gates, knows how, how long it's going to take for them to get to the jump so that they're not like jumping short or jumping too long or something. Um, Cause people like, I mean, you can, you can die at a steeplechase. Definitely. You you watch people, I've seen it before in uh, years, and just not even with the Olympics, just in other competitions. 
people do get hurt in equestrian jumping if a horse mm-hmm. just doesn't want to go. And this is one I'm not really going to fully make fun of, as you you have been you have horse uh, riding in your blood and history with you mm-hmm. and your sister. Um, I know one of my cousins did it, so we kind of were around it a bit. I used to love going to the fairs and watching it. But yeah, there's a lot of technique. But when it comes to the steeple chase, where because I think I look at more at the racing at that point. I feel like you're not going to have like a hundred hurdles between two towns. You might have a few just to kind of get in the horse's way. So like I said, like it, it still comes down ultimately to the horse. Mm-hmm. You have a, I, I have a feeling and as a horse jumper who like yourself and other pros, I could say you can have an average person riding it and a perfect horse and you would still make you the champion. I don't know. They might mm-hmm. say that's false. It, it's yeah. I'm going to leave it as steeplechasing. Sounds cool. I'd, I'd watch a championship match. I don't want to see it in the Olympics. Mm-hmm. No, I get that. I concur. So on to one that's just fucking hilarious again. Uh, croquet. Croquet was back in the, in the 1900s because that Olympics had two fucked up sports and they got rid of them real quick. <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. I can't even defend it. I mean, nope. I'm, sh- I'm sure to say for a novelty sake that they just introduced it one thing just to screw with people like that's an April Fool's joke, but no. No, no, no. That should never be taken seriously. It's a stupid activity on a lawn that just dumb old rich people play. And I'm sorry if you like so boring, like so boring. Well, you got to hit it through the uh, the freaking rings and then get it in the post. No, most people are just going to drill it as hard as they can and try to hit their friends. That now, oh yeah, croquet and dodgeball mixed together is a fantastic Olympic event, but not just fucking croquet. Start that. That would suck. Can you imagine just some assholes? Like you were just like you didn't really know the sport, but you just got picked for the Olympic team, and someone just fucking smoked a croquet ball at you. Your your ankle's gone. Oh See yeah, ya. it's shattered. It's shattered. It's gone. <laughs> Never mind. Bring it back. I want to watch that shit. I'll watch people jumping croquet balls all day long. Get the, be the dumbest thing in the world. You gotta, you gotta get the med team out there. The medic oh, team. My. I love it that we can just shit on these, the whole sports and the uh-huh. ideology of the Olympics to an extent. Like we said, we're us who are very not athletic. We're just shitting on sports. Well, hey, I used to be kind of athletic. And I feel like for me, like my interest in the Winter Olympics, I love curling, which is a boring ass sport for most people in the world. I love hockey. I love like just a lot of that kind of things, the snowboarding, the skiing, all that. Summer Olympics don't really like. I used to like some of the, the field events. I like javelin shot put. I used to be good at that back in the day. But yeah, so you, we are going to shit on a bit, but I understand like our Canadian athletes, top notch to all of you. We hope you win the gold. You you deserve it. You've worked your ass off for it, even with all these times. So, you know, go team Canada. You got our full support. Fuck everybody else. We don't give a shit about you. Absolutely. Um, but, yeah, so let's keep going though. This is another funny one. How we talk about weightlifting. Weightlifting is a straight up cool competition. That is yes. the epitome of strength and technique. And you really got to be the best of the best. So apparently back in the day, they said, hey, fuck it. You know what we should do when we first introduced weightlifting? One-handed weightlifting. Should that come back, Sam? Who died? <laughs> How many people died? Like, I just... I is- thought, I honestly, I thought you were going to say like arm wrestling. Yeah, that could be interesting. Again, that would be something more I would like to watch in a championship thing, like because they do have that. They have a whole. Circuit. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, but I don't want to see an Olympic event. I don't care. That's just kind of a little silly. That's just trying to make an event to get more coverage to hand out more shit. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's ignorant of me to say, but no, arm wrestling, hell no. And one handed weightlifting. Who can do the best bicep curl? Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean impressive. Some guys doing massive weights, but it's still fucking stupid. Ooh, good for you. Like, yeah. oh, good for you, bud. Good for you. Oh, look at you going. <laughs> There's a Canadian lift. Oh, also, I was gonna say, you get the Canadian lifting a two before, and the other guy's lifting a lot more. He's like, oh, look at you, bud. Oh, it's pretty good, eh? Well, here, let me come bop you in the fucking nose. Hey, what's your phone number? Dial it in your face. Yeah. Okay, are you talking Canadians or are you just talking new fees? Because new yeah. fees. <laughs> just, just segue right now is just about how many people think that canadians speak a certain way it's just you're talking about the newfies the newfies are the ones that say a boot yeah the maritimers and the, you know the and the, and the prairie guys they got a different accent than us ontario yeah. boys and the oh. northwest territories all or all the territories have different mm-hmm. um dialect ontario's the closest to americanized and that's why uh, oh yeah 
we are um, sickened by our own selves that we are close to them. Of, when I was in uh, Ireland, they actually um, kept, they're just like, oh, you sound so American. And I'd be like, oh, well, you guys sound so English. They hate that. They hate that so much. I'm just like, that's how it feels. Don't say it. Don't say it. I'm a Canadian. Yeah. Anyway, continue. Why in that? I, I would, I, again, this is something I, I watch the Canadians do because this is just, it seems like just a constra- catastrophe of fuck, fuckery and five totilleries. Sounds great. It's, so the, it's the modern pentathlon where it includes swimming, fencing, equestrian show jumping, a long distance run, and finishing off with pistol firing. So it's like a triathlon, yeah. except it is. It's two extra penta. events. It's a yeah. penta what? A pentathlon? Yeah, a, pentath- a pentathlon. So you're right, Sam. It is a triathlon. They just added two more and said penta. <laughs> well, yeah, because penta means five. Wow, oh, Sam, good for you. Oh, good for you. <laughs> I know what the fuck it says. I'm reading the damn thing. And it was five things. I read off five things. I know. And at least that's impressive. You had to do that shit back to back, which I don't get how you would. Like, what oh, are you I- doing? You swim and then you wait for the second place person so you can fight them in fencing and then you just move on to equestrian. Oh, I would, I would just- have to watch it. I would just die after the first bit. Like the very first. Wait, what was the first one they got to do? Um, so according to this, and I don't think it's true because it's just, it's a weird matching up with some of this, but it could be, um, it says swimming, fencing, equestrian show jumping, a long distance run and pistol firing that actually began uh, looking a little further into it. So you have to catch the horse. Like you just go running into the pasture, just trying to catch the horse. I I don't know, Sam, this must be, I wonder how long it's been around or they, if it's just new, this is apparently was uh, military training for cavalry men back in the day. Which, I mean, makes sense back, especially in Damn. around the um, Civil War times. Cavalry men had to be well uh, traversed with a saber. You had to be well traversed at shooting your pistol, well traversed on a horse. You had to be strong and fit enough to probably have that endurance to run very far. Swimming, you know, it's fun. So why not learn to swim? But <laughs> that's one I'll, I'll watch that. If it's somehow, if I could watch it, I should have did research and actually looked at a video. But from what I'm picturing, if it's literally back to back to back, fucking right. It's dumb as it sounds. That's a that is an Olympic event. If you're gonna put someone be like, hey, do these five in a row. Yeah, you got my respect. I ain't doing two of them in a row. I'm not gonna run and then do a big swim. Fuck that. I'm not even gonna fence somebody and then try to pretend to shoot. <laughs> Screw it. Did you say traversed or did you mean to say adverse? No, it's um no adverse, it's not adverse, it's tra- um. Oh, I thought it was traversed. You're so smart. Maybe I'm using the wrong word. I'm thinking, I thought it was tri- like, it's like TR or something. You teach our children. What are you doing? Right. Well, Traverse, yeah, something like that. But either way. Anyway. Yeah, that's another one. Um, this just, this will take back. So our parents are going to appreciate this sport more that uh, lasted from 19, 8, 19, 8, 18, sorry, 1896 oh, to 1932. Numbers are hard. It was rope climbing. <laughs> oh. Back in the day where your PE teacher in his two short shorts was yelling at you to climb up the rope. That was an Olympic event. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> no, that what sounds was, stupid. Wait, wait, wait. What was, oh my God, uh, Keegan-Michael Key's character in Mad TV. What was his name? Uh, Coach Hines. Coach Hines. I could just see him with like his high, his shorts. <laughs> You're an ashy. I swear to God, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but if you don't get up that goddamn rope, I will cut you in half with a hubcap. I see it on CSI Miami. I'll do it. Oh my God. Yeah, I could see that. Like, you have to have him there just to kind of like shout at the competitors. Absolutely. I think that'd be, that would make the sport. That's where I'd say I would it watch back. it. Yeah. If you made it into a novelty thing, which I hope you never do with the Olympics, but that's a novelty event. Have some, have like Terry Crews. Just give him a Red Bull and have him just scream like Sergeant Harry Jeffers styles at the Olympians to get up that rope. Oh my Best god! Sport in the world. Okay, so if you're if you're talking about Terry Crews, I could see him at the what is it the one the one armed weightlifting or something like that. Him with his no. weight with his fifty pound weights just dancing around, just like yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh and that'd be because that's awesome. what he. I think he did that in the um, the remake of the Longest Yards. Is like they were all supposed to be getting like you know working out and trying to get like you know into more of a um a football type shape like football athlete yeah. type shape and he was just dancing he was just he was already in shape so it, but he was just there for like moral support and like yeah just half those guys in that freaking movie were jack they didn't need to 
Mm-hmm. And most of those guys wouldn't probably not be able to do this one. But we're going to end it on this one with talking about what we should bring back. Um, and the sad part is I don't even think it's gone. I still think a part of me, because I haven't, I don't follow the Summer Olympics. I'm not going to hide that. I, th- I think it's still a sport. Uh, it's race walking or speed walking. Um, oh my God, that literally seriously? might be the stupidest fucking thing on earth. And I don't care if people are like, oh, it's difficult. And yeah, because it's stupid. It's so dumb. They had to make such a stupid ass rule about it. And it's just garbage. It's not a real thing. I don't care. Even if Canada won the gold five years in a row, I'd be like, I don't acknowledge you. I was just, I was just thinking, I'm like, how, how can you even do that? I think, I think in, in order for you to <clears> race <throat> walk, one foot has always had, like always has to be on the ground at the same time or something. Uh, yeah. It's when, you, I, I, when you run, you usually like at one point, both feet are kind of off the ground. Or maybe I'm, I don't know. I don't know. No, because you, you can't, you wouldn't have what I think, but you're right. I think it's almost both feet on the ground. You're on the right track. Cause when you were saying that yeah, rule, it sounds like familiar. That. It's so fucking dumb. And I'm sorry, people. People are just like, how could you say that? They're athletes. No, that is, you don't have to be an athlete at that point. You just got to have the technique down of the stupidest goddamn thing ever created. Live pigeon shooting is almost fucking better than speed Seriously. walking. And that's talking about killing hundreds of birds. And it still might be better than goddamn speed walking. But that's just my opinion. That is just my opinion, folks. Take it as all of this is just our opinions. So don't take it with a grain of salt. But when I hear the stupidity, and especially at one point when they want to say bring video games in the Olympics, I'm like, okay, hey, at this point, you're going to have break dancing soon. You're probably going to have rapping. You're probably going to have push ups. You're probably going to have who can spin their friggin'. I think they have uh, break dancing. I think they have break dancing now. I'm just, I'm done. I do. I have, uh, again, I also don't know because I don't watch the Summer Olympics, but I do think that they might have break dancing. I mean, you know think about the gonna... athleticism for break dancing. Like, I could no. see it. No, I don't want to. I don't even want to. I don't even want to. I don't want to humor it, Sam, mm. because I, no, I'm not, even gonna humor it. I'm not even going to talk about it. I don't want to humor it. It does. It's, it takes such extreme talent to do break dancing and a few other things that they're thinking about the Olympics. I'll even give video games. I'll give them their notch because they have huge world championships, but it comes to a point. It's too much. It, it becomes the Olympics are so bogged down by so much frigging crap. Uh, how do you get it all in? Either you have to cut TV time for certain sports. And some people are going to be like, why this is a, this is a more historic event. That's been around longer. You can have that argument. You could say we could add it a day, but then that gets more costly. And it's, it's a whole thing. So I'm at this point and, and ultimately don't frigging add any more shit. We don't need it. I'm already bored with half the crap in every Olympics and that includes yep. the winners. But, but with that, Sam, that means, you know what, let's just invent our own. Because if there's one Olympics, I think the world would have a blast in. And I get that whole persona. I get this whole idea from a great movie called Beer Fest. Mm-hmm. I say we bring the Beer Olympics then. Because if there's yeah. anything that this whole world can goddamn do besides soccer, because realistically, everybody fucking plays soccer in the world. That's world's most popular sport. So let's do the world's most popular activity. Drink world drinking beer. event. Could you imagine? You could have it like how you could set it up kind of like um, Beer Fest. You could have flip cup, beer pong, monkey chug, boot chug. You could do some kind of obstacle course. You could have, and literally, it could be a small event. You're talking about maybe six to eight events, maybe. But it would be phenomenal. And no, like, dumb drinking games. Like, you wouldn't see King's Cup in there. You wouldn't see other made-up sports. Like, the real concrete, I'm going to use this in quotations, athletic events when it comes to drinking at parties. But it would be, I think it'd be so cool. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, Mm-hmm. Watch Beer Fest. It's a it's a great movie for how dumb it is. But Sam, like, I I think Team Canada. We're looking good because if my memory is good, which it isn't, it's you would represent Team Canada fine because the world r- kind of notes two phenomenal powerhouses when it comes to drinking, and it's the Irish and the Germans. Mm-hmm. Everybody else out there, especially you Americans, can go suck a dick because well, first of all, they drink water, shit beer. Yeah, your beer is garbage. You're, you you might be good people. And if you listen to us, awesome. We appreciate it. But you don't even come close. Uh, but Ireland and, and Germany, easily in the top five for notably the best drinkers in the world. Sam, you beat them both. Why don't you give us a little little telling story See the of thing how is- a little girl from Canada went over there and kicked <laughs> the shit out of them in drinking? Uh, oh, yeah, I did that twice. Actually, I was, I was thinking about 
um, in Ireland, I, I brought over, we were, uh, we were going out for a night out. And I mean, I think everyone in the entire world can uh, relate to this. You know, you're going to go out for a night drinking. You're going to go out on the town night drinking. So you're going to go to a bar. You're going to go to a club, something like that. What do you do beforehand? You pre-drink. You pre-drink. Absolutely, you pre-drink. If you're planning on on going, you know, you want to you want to keep that money in your pocket, and you're going to be spending way too much if you go out to the bar. So you go to pre-drink before you go out. What? I do my hair. What are you doing? I gotta I gotta make sure this hair is slick. Oh my god, it's too shiny. You're breaking yeah, the camera. So bald. No, but you're right. Absolutely. Yeah. Sorry, Sam. Yeah. Pre-drink. Yeah. So yeah, you answer. got a pre-drink. So I was going out with my classmates, and I uh, you was was showing them. I was showing them this one game called uh, Circuit. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, you, you probably look it up. I'm not really going to explain it, but I know that you know what Circuit is, right, Woody? Oh yeah, phenomenal card game that can get you fucked up depending on what you draw. you real Simple fucked that. up. Um, so I showed them Circuit, and I think. Two of them didn't make it out, and one person really fucked up their ankle because they fell. <laughs> and that was uh, that was before we went out, and every like they were all just like, "Dude, like you guys do this?" I'm like, "Absolutely, we do this before a night out. Like this is how we do." And that's well, hold on, was- Sam. What? Can I interject? It, it, we don't just play it once. That's the difference oh, between we the Canadian. So many times. Yeah, we play that a couple of times, Absolutely. and I mean, it, it'll fuck you up real good. It and, would. If I may give a rule, Sam, before you continue your story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if I remember correctly, mm-hmm. you equate the cards for how many seconds you drink. And we're not even going to do the rules. So let's just say you flip up the 10 of spades. Yep. You were chugging your beer for 10 seconds. So that means if you get the jack, or sorry, the, the king, that's jack 11, 12, king, 13 seconds. And for some quick fun, so if I draw the king of spades, I'm chugging for 13 seconds on my turn. Sam's beside me. She throws up the eight of spades. <laughs> oh, wow. We connect. There's a circuit of spades. Mm-hmm. So suits match. So I drink for another 13 seconds. And when I get to the eight second mark, Sam then starts to drink. Mm-hmm. And then it could be, holy shit. The next person beside us pulls up the eight of hearts. Well, and now they connect to Sam's eight and still connects to my king of spades. So now I, again, drink for 13 seconds. Mm-hmm. Sam drinks for eight and our buddy, let's say Heather drinks for eight. Yep. And it can, you can have those connections of suit or number. And my God, Germany fell to Canada. Uh, actually, that was a, a different game that we, that we played. Um, oh, I thought you did both. I apologize. No, we didn't. No, we didn't do a uh, circuit then. Um, but I was going to say the true champions of the circuit game. Ace is not one. Ace is 14. It is. That's uh, that's that's how you know. That's how you know you play the game. Um, no. So uh, me and my uh, I'm going to say my Olympic uh, beer uh, champion or teammates would be one of my closest friends, Megan. Um, mm-hmm. We met when we were traveling through um, uh, England. Actually, we met these these German these German people. Very nice people. And uh, we showed them how to ride the bus. Oh, uh, OK. Yeah, we showed them how to ride the bus. The thing is, though, and we were this was the, the most hilarious thing. They ordered us um, uh, um, Gagger bombs. But they mm. so what they did was they ordered. So it was it was a, a glass. It wasn't a shot. It was a full glass of Red Bull with like. Right. So so we had like these giant glasses of Jaeger and they like, you know, gave them to us like, here you go. Here you go. And me and Megan were just like, oh, my God, this is like the biggest Jaeger bomb ever. And we both cheers and we're just like bottoms up because that's the only thing we know to do with a Jaeger bomb. And they're apparently in Germany. You sip a Jaeger bomb. What? It's just it's a it's just a drink. It's you're not meant to chug it. So <laughs> me and Megan are just down in the hatch. <laughs> Oh yeah. And they were just looking at us like, no, we're not going to do that. But yeah, we showed them how to ride the bus and uh, they had to go to bed because they couldn't handle riding the bus. So me and Megan actually felt like we won that, that Olympics, that beer Olympics. So, well, for, and for those who don't know, ride the bus, another quick explanation. It's literally, let's say you just have 10 cards in front of you. It's higher or lower. So Mm -hmm. you, you say higher, lower, higher, lower, higher, lower. Let's say, what, where the ride the bus aspect gets fun and what we Canadians are, I'm sure 
I, I know Americans who do it. I'm sure across the world, they might have uh, this done. But for you who don't know, you get to that fifth card. Let's say you said higher. Oh, crap. You got it wrong. The card was actually lower. You go back to the very start. You go back to that first card and all new cards are flipped up and you got to do it again. So I'm even though it might look like points, yeah, uh, you know what? Fuck checkpoints. Some people don't do checkpoints. Some people, really don't. people, but you might get a checkpoint. But ultimately, it's like, even though you might have only 10 cards or sometimes eight, if you're really nice, doesn't seem like a lot. You just got to guess correctly. But you might be guessing all the whole deck. And if you mm-hmm. guess the whole deck, you, you finish all your cards. Oh, that sucks. Reshuffle. Start again. Yep. Yeah. And riding the bus can literally be the easiest drinking game you get to go through or the most living hell that you have to endure. Now, in, in some cases, and this is... Um... Uh, 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 discretion or, uh, discretionary uh, advisement for everyone. We are not into drinking and driving, but sometimes when you ride the bus, the bus driver chooses to drink with the passenger. Yep, and just for fun because it's like just for not, fun, not you actually. Realize how much but they're... yeah, it's just it's it's just a like a a thing that they that people say. Just you know, yeah. I'll drink with my passenger until they keep fucking up, and I'm like, yeah, and I'm just like, I'm done just for fun. <laughs> Sometimes. Like that's you're an you. idiot. Mm-hmm. Like, because there's times like if you make a bold call, and a higher, it's based, like I said, it's higher or lower. So you have a five in front of you, and somehow you remember there's been a shit ton of high cards, and you say lower on the five and you get it correct. Oh hell yeah, I'm drinking with you. What a call! You get that shit wrong. I'm not drinking with you, you stupid moron. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But yeah, Sam, that's why you got to be on Team Canada. You beat the Irish at a drinking game. You beat the Germans. I, you know, I've beaten plenty of Canadians. I used to be a big beer pong champion. Mm -hmm. Flip cup, I was always anchor. I could do mostly one flip every time. Not the fastest chugger in the world, but that's why we didn't fill the red cup all the way. Half a thing, I could slam that quick. But what I did, because I went, when I went to college, a couple of Americans beat the shit out of them, no problem. Mm -hmm. Because that's not hard to do, though. No, you're good people. I've seen your videos, your party videos. You're, you're, I'm sure you're wonderful people that, Mm -hmm. um, are as stupid as you, you act. Your beer, though. Um, huh. See, I, I've gone to the States a few times. Uh, Florida one time. I was a Labatt Blue drinker. I can admit that. It's a horrible thing in Canada to admit. But um, I liked it. I went to Florida and I got one. I was excited. I was like, yes, Canadian beer. I can enjoy Canadian beer. I don't have to drink the piss water. That is American beer. Mm-hmm. And oh my God, you fucked up Labatt Blue. And even worse than it is, like... Brewing standards, this is where I feel. I'm sorry, America. Well, I might not, I don't even want to invite you in the Olympics. Or when it comes to it, you might, you might just say the host is that's whose beer you use. Mm-hmm. So you get the home, t- you get the home field advantage, whatever. America, you're not ever getting that because brewing standards are so different. This one could be cool for the Olympics. This could really test the might. If you drink Canadian, uh, uh, British beer, you drink Irish beer, Scottish ale. Uh, German loggers and pilsners and all all their crap like they got fantastic. Uh, I know the Czech Republic. Or, sorry, not Czech Republic. Ch- Czechoslo- no, yeah, it is Czech Republic. I was called Czech Republic or Slovakia. They're not the Czechoslovakia. Yeah, yeah. So the Czech Republic has good beer. Belgians got good beer. Um, it'd be very interesting to have the European countries just like, yep, here's the keg. Mm-hmm. Every single event, it could be whatever it is. It could be all randomized. But Fun. sorry, Mary, I don't mean to shit on you, but your beer is not up. A- to our standards but the thing is though is that i think canadian beer is actually like world renowned for being like pretty decent beer um because in canada uh sorry in canada in ireland a lot of um a lot of my classmates would actually buy molson canadian so now here's the kicker sam and this is where i wondered if it's if it says on the bottles so this is where i noticed with the black blue in the states even though it's a canadian name it was brewed in the states to the standards of the state. So I wonder even if Ireland, if it was all oh, their standards. I'm gonna tell you this: Ireland does not have a Molson Canadian plant or brewery. <laughs> they, or they're gonna say Ireland doesn't have a standard. <laughs> they just, <laughs> yeah, they just no brew standards. and drink. That's why I went. <laughs> <laughs> no standards whatsoever. Um, but you were talking about something. You you said that you're a good anchor. You can flip a cup, and but you're not a big uh, uh, like quite the chugger though, right? Uh, I, I savor my love chugger. I know someone who can chug both of us under the table. And I know that is people. your fiance. Yeah. Now she I was going to say, so dynamite. she's got this technique, kids, where I'm going to hold my drink to it. But yeah, fuck it. I'll just use my drink. She's able to literally, if you're watching on YouTube, this is the way better. She can cup the glass, 
flip it upside down. And when she does, she leaves just a small air pocket in it that she'll drink out of. But I guess the physics behind it, the air bubble isn't following you. It's up at the top. So it's actually pushing down all the beer. And you see those videos where people look like they just open their throat, dump it, and it drops. I've seen her do that. And it's disgusting. Like, it's one of those things where I tease her. That was love at first sight for you, I think. No, it caused a lot of competition because I was like, okay, you mouthy little bugger, let's go. You want to try to out chug, uh, 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 chug, uh, dude? <laughs> out uh, chug, <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you, you want to out chug old craft? What do you bring it on? And I watched her. I didn't even pick up my beer. She just went right to this trick. And I was like, I got scared. So I called my other good buddy and I knew he was one of the best drinkers I ever saw. I said, hey, just cocky scared me. I was like, you want to face the champ. You got to go through the number one contender. And thank God my buddy Josh beat him Josh or beat her sorry uh because he's just I was gonna say Miller for some reason I thought maybe Miller I can't fucking drink prog rocker (laughs) we've had on the show before he can't he can't chug anymore but Mm -hmm. yeah you know what everybody's got their hidden talents everybody's got the powerful drinkers and I know we generalize that Sam beat a couple of Irish beat a couple of Germans but when it comes to the Olympics I think you would see a growing popularity in beer Olympics you would see in a beer fest style it's something we promote it's a chance for even micro breweries, craft breweries, uh, some of the bigger domestic breweries to come around, showcase their beer all over the world. Let people really come together on something. Even though it causes a lot of fights, you see a lot of issues with bar fights and problems, but really when it comes down to it, beer can bring people together. It'd be really cool. That's just our opinion on beer the bring, Olympics. Beer, the beer brought Olympics. us together. Beer did bring us together. It brought a lot of us together, a lot of love and caring between us when we're drinking. It's great. And you know what? To our athletes who, if this comes out and it's done, because we're not going to follow, we don't really care. If it pops up that we won, sweet, awesome. But we're proud of you. You're representing the red and white. You're representing the Maple Leaf. Uh, proudly, we're supportive. I'm going to say that in quotations. Like, as we keep saying, we don't really give a shit about the sports. But that as long as we, we win. Yep, yeah, we care about our athletes. We just don't care about yeah. the sports you do, except for the Winter Olympics. That's awful to say, but mm-hmm. Beer Olympics, we're here. Mike's and Beers, your sponsors, your hosts, whatever you need. As always, Sam, this was fun. I'm uh, glad we could get together on a Monday. I mean, it sounds know, a little right? hectic. Maybe we were a little angry at the Olympics for no reason because of the Monday blues, but Maybe. Ah, well. not really, not really sure. I'm just, uh, I think I'm just, I'm just tired. I'm just always tired though. Let's be honest. So, but all that yeah. matters is if you need gold in your life, go to Bowmanville, Ontario, Canada, visit Chronicle Brewery and get yourself El Dorado. And if you really want a good beer, go to, oh, I'm joking. I'm joking. I love Chronicle. Wow. Um, go to All or Nothing Brew House in Oshawa, Ontario. So literally just go to uh, Boneville and then take a good uh, 15, 20 minute drive to Oshawa. Grab some of these guys. So yeah. and if, as always, guys, you can find us on YouTube, Spotify, Anchor, and Apple Podcasts under Mics and Beers. If you just want to just shoot the shit with us, we're easily messaged through Facebook and Instagram and Twitter at Mics and Beers. You can find yourself Craft Woody on there, Sam on her Instagram. Mm-hmm. We probably won't answer on personal Facebooks. So that's your, neither there. Oh, I will. I'm lonely. Guys, there you go. Yeah. But, you know, like, comment, subscribe. We always love to hear you guys' opinions. If you have some breweries you want us to ch- uh, ch- chase, change, challenge, do. Are you okay? <laughs> but please talk to us. We are. We are. Can I say the word lonely? try? Why did, why did it come out as a C? I don't know. <laughs> Chai. You want to chai something? <laughs> no, a As always, that, that suits you. What? It was awesome talking with you, Sam. I can't wait to do this again. <laughs> Bikes and beers. Yay. Fuck it. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> yeah, we're not the gold standard. Bring it in the bronze. Mikes and beers. We'll see you next time. See you guys. <laughs>